Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from this channel, and in this video we'll talk about strategy versus tactics, illustrating that with some gameplay in the Tier 6 Premium Spitfire 5B IM. So here we are on the Scorching Sands map. It's the Invasion variant, and this is a five sector map with three garrisons and two air bases. From a strategic point of view, the garrisons, as we can see here, confer three resources every five seconds, and that is it. The air bases also confer three resources every five seconds, but they can also be selected as a spawn point if you die. You can also select a different aircraft of the same tier, and it can also repair your aircraft. Clearly, from a strategic point of view, these two air bases are the most important sectors on the map but they are far flung from each other. And tactically, the strategically important sectors are not always the places where the battle rages. And that's because there is this garrison in the middle, which basically allows access to other parts of the map most quickly. And tactically, what tends to happen is that planes will congregate in the middle and spend a lot of the time trying to possess this sector simply to make it easier to attack other sectors. So let's have a look at the order of battle, because as I hope is becoming clear from these videos, tactics are also affected by what aircraft are in the game. And here we can see me in my Spitfire 5B IM. I have a Mosquito Heavy at the same tier, a good turn fighter in the A6M20, and one of my favourite Tier 5 heavies, the BF110E. On the opposing team, there is a Tier 6 Mosquito, and then three other Tier 5 aircraft. So clearly the enemy has a bit of a disadvantage here, as I, we have two Tier 6s, and I appear to be the only specialised aircraft. So, let's get started with the battle. And obviously, the, the local garrison is by far and away the nearest sector, and you have to fly through it to get to any other sector, so that's what's going to be attacked first by the majority of players. It's possible some of the bots, or maybe a heavy, will try and fly off to an airfield first. Now the Spitfire 5B, whether it's in the Iron Maiden variant, uh, or the ordinary variant that was introduced into the game fairly recently is highly manoeuvrable and it can attack either the, the uh, light fighters or the heavies at this sector. But generally what happens is the sector is taken quickly and then we immediately head towards the strategically important sector of the airfield. And it's usually this one as far as I'm concerned because it, it, I'm normally nearer, nearer to this one. Here I'm using the Spitfire's obvious manoeuvrability advantage to try and knock down the air defence aircraft as quickly as possible. And very nearly I'm taken out by one of my own players. So we've secured the strategically important airfield. <coughs> On many maps it would then be uh, a good idea to stay at the strategically important sector and defend it. But as I uh, trailed in the uh, opening remarks, on this map, the centre becomes tactically important because it is the gateway to all other sectors. So I've spent a little time clearing out the threat to the airfield. I see the middle has already been taken by the, the enemy, which isn't that worrying because they haven't taken their airfield. And then I'm going to head towards the middle. Pick up repairs first. I mentioned that the airbase allows you to repair your aircraft. Don't forget to do that when you have the chance. So I've 
mentioned in previous videos that I bind my X key to lock nearest target. You will have seen that I used it a lot there to decide which target I would shoot at first. I won't always shoot at the nearest target. <coughs> I will always try and choose what I think is the biggest threat. But if you fly past a nearer target, you always risk being turned upon by it and shot down. You have to balance your decisions. And we've now secured the middle already. And as you can see, the game has developed, as I mentioned in the introductory remarks. My team has three sectors, including the, se the central, central garrison. The enemy has their local garrison and an airfield. And on Scorching Sands invasion, this is very frequently the pattern you will see. And therefore, tactically, in a game that is reasonably close, the possession of this sector in the middle, the garrison, which strategically shouldn't be that important, is tactically the way to win the game. So whilst I'm wheeling about and avoiding the enemy heavies over this cent central uh, garrison, I'll just mention why I make these videos and it's not because I want to show off how good a player I am because actually I'm not really that good. I'm above average but I'm not elite status by far. If you want to see elite gameplay as, you, as I've just demonstrated by flying through my own uh, plane, if you want to see elite gameplay you can look elsewhere for that. There are far better sources but what I do hope is that I illustrate some of the strategic, tactical uh, and other considerations that affect a battle and not just your plain flying skill. So I've taken quite a bit of damage there, all self-inflicted because I was silly enough to fly through my own player. So I've come back to use the repair facility at the airbase. Let's have a quick look and see how the battle's going and already I've amassed a, a fairly decent score and at this point I'm also looking to see who on the enemy team is performing well because they clearly are probably the biggest threat. Now you probably heard an artifact there which was my phone pinging me. I apologize for that but I'm not going to bother taking it out. Now the enemy has clearly worked out that possession of the middle is important and they've taken it back whilst I was getting repairs. So now it's my job to try and seize this area again. And what I'm shooting at now is the threat I've identified as the biggest in this game, which is the enemy mosquito. Remove him and I believe we've got a good chance of taking this sector. And I've even done it before the sector has unlocked because I don't want to have the problem of him flying around when I'm looking at other targets. You'll notice there I didn't stop to kill the boomerang. There are so many aircraft here you can only really afford one burst and then you must disengage and try and engage a different aircraft. If you concentrate on aircraft for too long in a furball like this you will likely find yourself engaged and shot down. And right now we look as if we're in a bit of trouble. We're four sectors to one down, but it is worth noting that two of the sectors, and as you've just seen, one of the sectors has now flipped over to us, so it's three to two, two of the enemy sectors were actually close to being captured. So I wasn't too worried. However, you should always keep an eye on your sector count in games. Winning games is not about staying over a sector and keeping it safe. Sometimes you have to leave sectors and obtain others, or you will lose. It seems obvious, but so often in the heat of battle you forget it. And there goes to the winged legend notification. So here I've decided it's not worth attacking the airfield. I don't see any of my team going there. We've still got three sectors, although interestingly we now have 
the enemy's local garrison and they have ours. Tactically I've decided that possession of the middle is the most likely way to win this game and I'm going to defend this sector. It's very likely we will retake our local garrison and I can see that the enemy is not doing very well in retaking theirs. And a Hero of the Sky notification goes through. And as you can see my tactical analysis of the situation earlier was correct and now we are four sectors to one up. The kosher dub has just gone through. So this is turning into quite a nice game. The enemy team is now down to bots only. And we are in a strong position. It's very likely we've won this game. The middle is secure. With that target I pick up the ace. So I've now left the middle and I've come to pick up damage and kills at the remaining sector that the enemy owns. And that is it. The enemy has been defeated. There's nothing more for me to do. So a good haul of medals there and a rather nice personal points tally. So let's review the outcome of this battle. As you can see from the centre, it was a five chevron battle. Confirmation that that is a grade one fighter, the best result obtainable. I obtained 198,861 credits or silver. That's with a premium account bonus as is shown there. The next two items will also have bonuses of course. If we pop along to the message box quickly, we can see there were no expenses because the aircraft wasn't shot down and I used prepaid consumables. 5,300 base experience with bonuses, 265 free experience and six tokens. An Akamatsu, a Koshidub, a Marseille, a Winged Legend, a Hero of the Sky Badge and an Ace. Moving on to the personal score, we can see that there were 21,915 personal points, which is quite a nice game. Four sectors captured, showing that the aircraft did quite a lot of attacking. 21 aerial targets destroyed, which is one more than is needed for an Ace. 5,690 damage to aerial targets, which is quite nice for a Tier 6 fighter. 29 critical hits and 760 capture points and if we just hover over that we can see they were split almost equally between defending 400 points and 360 points for attacking sectors. Going to the team score tab we can see that that was enough for first place and I think everybody can be pleased with their contributions to this game. So let's wrap up. For what looks like a simple arcade style shoot em up game World of Warplanes actually has both strategic and tactical depth. If you want to master the game, you'll need to take account of those elements as well as fly well. I hope you found something to enjoy in this video. In my next video, I'll be discussing base experience, how it's calculated, what it's used for, and how to boost it. Keep an eye out for that. Until the next time, this is Royal Flying Corps, signing out.